Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for May 30th, 2020. We always talk about having choice. We all do. Uh, we all make choices every day, every second, most of the time. Sometimes, you know, most of the time we don't pay much attention to making choices. We just do it. It's, it's not a... Um, how you put it, it, it it's not something we pay attention to we just make choices we don't think about making the choice much we just say okay well I'll do this or I'll have this or I'll have that or you know now we also choose that we choose to worry um, we choose to be angry we choose to be happy so we're always choosing um a lot of the times we aren't aware that we're choosing. I mean, in, in a way, we, we don't say, okay, so I'm going to choose this, and I'm aware that I'm choosing this. We just say, you know, we just do it. And when we worry, okay, we all worry. Some, some more than others. None of us are exempt from it. We all worry. But what, what the worry does is it, it, it closes off our energy field. So stress, worry, and but when you wonder and when you wonder you literally open up to in, infinite possibility. You ever sat and wondered why I wonder I wonder what would happen, or I wonder how this would be if I did it this way. You know, uh, we all do it. We wonder. And when we're wondering, wondering, we let the universe know that these are things that, in a way, we're asking for because we're wondering about them. And then the universe responds, reciprocates by sending us some phenomenal gifts while we're wondering. A lot of people say, I wonder how that ha I wonder how that happened. I wonder if I were to do this, what would happen? I wonder why that's going on. We all do it. Oh, well, different times and in this existence, in this life. And wonderment is one of the gateways to unlimited wealth and abundance and happiness and joy. Everything that we are within, but we have not made that correlation yet. So wonderment is phenomenal. Wondering, uh, I wonder what I wonder what what's in that water, or I wonder what's under that rock. Uh, it's curiosity, wonderment, and it it literally <clears throat> excuse me, it literally brings in all kinds of unexpected. So you have no expectations and you have no attachments, and you're just kind of going with the flow, and you ask yourself, I wonder how fast that is. I wonder how strong that is. And you ever notice that usually, when we do that, we something happens, something moves into our lives. Now, we may not be clear or aware of it, but it does. Things move into our lives, into our existence. And the universe is kind of, you know, it's really funny because so many of us fight. Uh, we fight the stream. We fight the current. A lot of times we don't know we're fighting the current, but we do. And the universe is constantly trying to give us whatever it is we want. That's the truth. 
universe is pure consciousness. Universe was created by pure consciousness. That's why those before us have created universes. So doesn't that make sense, okay, that you have this massive amount of consciousness, pure consciousness, and in, 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 in us that we have within us, the God, the kingdom of God, this pure consciousness that vibrates within us, and it's, it's filled with all desires, everything is possible, infinitely, unending, existing for eternity, forever. But we haven't learned how to tap into it see, because it's part of the merge uh, with our, with our, it's interesting, it's the merge with our physical reality to our etherical reality coming together into one. And it is, it's to be one as we walk this planet with, with the pure consciousness, the kingdom of God, and the body. So we become one. We're aware. Now, most of us are separated on the planet. We're separated because we believe a certain way, and that's how powerful we are. So we, we don't realize that we're really connected and we're one with the God source, the pure consciousness. And that's, that's really the key element in our journey into discovering who and what we are. If you discover that you're pure consciousness, then nothing, nothing stands in your way but you. And I know it might be confusing to people, to some people, but you kind of look at it from the standpoint is that we're immersed here in these bodies. When we enter these bodies, when our consciousness enters these bodies, we're influenced. We're influenced because of the physicality and the emotion and the feeling that we experience through these bodies. So it's, it's kind of like a separation until we are able to bring it back together so that we walk as gods, we talk as gods, we love as gods, we are pure consciousness as we walk the planet. So we're able to literally create the reality anything we desire because we're of that vibrational frequency. None of the desiring is of greed or uh, manipulation or gain or power. It is, that's not what it's about. <clears throat> Excuse me, when you know, when you really do know within your heart mind that everything is yours, it's not about ownership. For any of us, it's not about having, it's that everything is ours because we're the creation that creates all things. So it, it, you, can, you, you can see how that's different, how it shifts on this planet. Not just this planet, there's many others, but you, you realize that, okay, so I'm pure consciousness and I, I merge with this body, so not only am I aware of the physical, also aware of the spiritual and we walk together so as we walk together on this planet we begin to experience our power and our power is is whatever we desire but when we desire we are not twisted or misconstrued in our desiring because we desire happiness for everyone we desire great wealth abundance and prosperity for everyone we, we, you know, we desire everyone is happy, that every, everyone discovers the gods within them. Not, not, it's not about discovering and wanting for ourselves. That's automatic. We know that. So what we do is we, we direct with everyone because we're one. You understand? We're one. So each of us that becomes aware in a wake of this, then we're literally looking at lifting the rest of us, the rest of the one, in higher frequencies, in higher existence, in higher experiences moving forward. And that's, that's kind of the fulfillment that many of us, when we come into our own and we understand that we are pure consciousness within this body, 
that we are the kingdom of God and the God, and that we literally create all things, everything. Isn't it, isn't it ironic that how many people um, try to create reality and manifest and take all these courses in all these directions and everything, and it never happens for them, so to speak. And the funny thing is, is that all they're doing is, is ignoring the power within them. They don't get it. It's not about the body. It's about the God. And once you discover the God, you understand that the God is all things. It's, uh, it's it, it, immortality. It is forever. Then we understand that, okay, so why, why wouldn't it be a cinch? to create reality or manifest anything we desire. Because we stop ourselves, we stand our own way. We, we choose to worry, which closes off our energy field. We choose to stress, which closes off our energy field. We choose to be angry and aggressive and, and uh, distrusting and analytical and judgmental. We close off our energy field. And when you close off the energy field, it's like shutting the door of the universe and shutting the door to the God that you are. So that's why these little frequencies that we harbor, that we attract, that we generate, that we create, are not for us. You ever notice how it makes you, how it, how it, it, it lends to you, how in your feeling, uh, how you're acting, how you're being? You ever, you ever notice that? And... We don't think about it much. We're just in it. Once you're in it, you're not you're not thinking about it. You're you're not emo emotional. You're not through the heart mind. So you get into it. You get into the anger, the frustration, the anxiety. It's the same with our egos, our ego mind. Our ego mind is, is and as we all know, we have them. None of us are exempt from our egos. Some we you know some of us have. Uh, you know, major egos, massive egos. Some of us have so-so, and some of us have very little because we have progressed enough, ascended enough to understand more and more about who and what we are. So the, the, the biggest challenge for our civilization is to manage the ego while we're in the body to the point where the ego no longer dictates at all. See, where, where nothing really irritates you. The ego is the irritation through the heart-mind. So the ego dictates to the heart-mind. The heart-mind then responds with emotional response. And it could be hatred, anger, it could be greed, could be jealousy. Uh, it's many things. So does it make any sense for us? to worry. And what happens when we worry? How many times have you worried? You know, where you have that uneasy stomach feeling and you have that forelearning, that kind of like jar cloud that you feel is coming and, you, and the ego is like on fire and you're just, oh, what is going to... And how many times has it actually occurred? How many times? Maybe one percent out of a hundred. So, and why is that? Why doesn't it occur? People say, okay, so, uh, you know, I keep thinking it's going to occur, so I must be manifesting or creating the reality because I'm thinking it's going to occur. Ah. Uh -huh. There's two voices that are within you. There's the God voice and there's the ego voice. Ego voice is the worry, the fear. The God voice is the love and the confidence and the contentment. And it usually, like I said, 99% of the time wins out. You see how hard it is for us to really be angry and how much we have to push it emotionally to be angry? You know, you see that? You, you have never... Have you ever been able to identify the fact that 
it is it takes a lot to be angry and hateful and um, um, to have huge ego out of control it takes a lot of effort doesn't it you ever thought about that when we get angry we get uh, uh, hurried we get exasperated we get disrupted so to speak in our in our travels uh, in this experience in this life and we but then let's flip the coin and when we are happy when we move into happiness joy and sanctity peace bliss it's easy isn't it and its effects are profound and far reaching aren't they now you notice I'm sure we all notice that when we do get angry is it do you think a lot of people want to be around us do you uh, we experience this people leave they they disappear they, they don't care to be around anger um, or hatred they don't care about being there and it, it, it's it's a it's an awareness that we come into as part of our journey as part of our experiencing that we come to the full understanding is that I, I don't choose to be angry anymore I don't choose to worry anymore this is why I'm incessantly talking about you know no expectations no attachments going with the flow there's a reason I talk about that so much it's because eventually you start to understand with yourself that why why do I choose to worry I have no need to worry and that's it and you know how you eliminate the worry and the fear and the anxiety and the stress you genuinely through your God through your, your pure consciousness you go with the flow you you have no attachments or expectations if you have a if you have expectations and attachments it means you won't let go you 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 funnel your direction your attention to these frequencies of expecting expecting something expecting something to happen expecting this and then you let yourself down and you feel disheveled or uh, irritated or uh, unhappy because of the fact that what you expected didn't happen uh, and, and then you, you, just, you just don't feel good about that you know geez I was expecting this to happen and nothing and then didn't even come close to that this is the ego that dictates to it these expectations and these attachments so worrying is an expectation that's what it is it's an attachment uh, worry fear anxiety stress it's an attachment it's an expectation so when something comes into your field your energetic field and it's the ego dictating it sends this thought in and we have something or we do something and then we begin to worry whether or not we should have done it or we should have done something different that now we maybe something will happen uh, that isn't good or pleasant and so then we start worrying about it or you're, you're, you're into the future when you're only supposed to be in the now and you're in the future worrying are you going to be able to pay your rent are you going to be able to do this and you start worrying way in advance say you have, an, you, you have an experience where you barely were able to pay your rent or barely able to pay a bill that was that was uh, a necessity and you begin to immediately start worrying about after you paid that bill and instead of being in deep gratitude and happiness and joy and thankfulness you immediately switch to be worrying about the future and how you're going to pay this bill next month you see how it works that's what happens with all of us now those of us that choose that that's not the gig anymore we don't enjoy that that's not something that we choose to do or to experience so we we let go of the worrying by eliminating our attachments and our expectations 
and we just know the squeaker would flow. So we don't worry, see? You get used to not worrying. You get used to not fearing or stressing. Because remember, guys, whatever we do, whatever we think, say, or feel, we are moving energy into form. It's an inevitability. It isn't something that you don't do, that you do on occasion. It's something that all of us do 24-7. And it's to become aware of our physical emotions. It's to become aware of our heart, mind, our kindness, our generosity, our happiness, our joy that we immerse ourselves in and we choose to because I'll tell you being angry and then being happy uh, there's no way anybody would want to be angry it's the residual effects of it after you are angry you ever notice the residual effects they're almost as, they're almost stronger than the initial engagement of anger and what does anger do? You can see it on this planet. You can see it amongst our brothers and sisters. You can see it happening. These, uh, these conflicts and this anger and fear and destruction and hatred and aggression. Those are all lower dark matter frequencies. Okay? We choose. We choose. So do we choose wisely? Do we learn enough to choose wisely? Do we choose to wonder? I wonder. This meditation, simply put, is wonder. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to relax our bodies. But how do we relax our bodies? A lot of us think we relax. We take R and R from R and R. We take vacations. You know, we uh, we you know we go here, we go there, we take trips. But yet, you've ever noticed, if you've ever experienced this in your life, you take a trip, and then you get home, and you're exhausted from your trip that was supposed to relax you. Isn't that a riot? And I think it's because a lot of us have a guilt that we should, we should be doing something, that we don't deserve to relax. We don't deserve to just let it, just let it go and just do nothing. That flips us back to the visualization of the hammock in between the two beautiful trees. And we're lying in the hammock, and it's a beautiful summer breeze, mid-afternoon. Not too cool, not too warm, just right. And we are just laying in that hammock. Maybe we took a book and we were going to go out there and just read a book or just, you know, relax, take a nap. You can, you can have your eyes closed and you can kind of see the shadows of the leaves and the beams of sunlight dancing through, beaming through the leaves and you can hear the fluttering of the leaves with the breeze. And your, your, your body is perfect temperature, you're cool, um, you're not warm, hot. And you hear, you know, things off into the distance, maybe a bird, you know, if you live in a, in a closer a cluster of uh, living places and you might hear a dog or a mower or you might smell barbecue in the air but it's distant it's, it's not affecting you it doesn't your, your, your senses and emotions are not they're not bothered by it. you're just there you're in you don't move because you are in a place of being and you're interested in moving and you notice that you're not thinking at all and you really you're not doing anything. You're just at ease. And it's, it's, it's such a, a, a place to be where you don't care to move. 
you, you don't care to, to see or do anything but just be. And that's when your body is in complete relaxation. So picture that. Whenever you'd like to relax the body, picture that, visualize it in your heart mind. And be that. Because only you can do that. No one can do it for you. So as you relax the body, as we all relax our bodies, we move into the now. And the now is really all we have. Everything happens in the now. How is that? How is that? How does everything happen in the now? Well, in the now, sometimes we go into the past. The past is right there. We've lived and experienced all of the things in the past. Why would we go back there and reminisce or do any of that? We carry that experience with us forward. We don't need to visit it. And then, but a lot of us will be seduced by the past because you reminisce, the ego mind kicks you around and then you go back in time and you know, oh, that was wonderful. I remember that happy time. Or you do, you pick something up or you, you look at something and then you have this rush of memory come in and you, it's reminiscent. Those are all good. But the problem that happens is, is that we get so into it that our heart mind is so immersed with it that we bring it into a future that doesn't exist and we create our future through our past and then we relive our past in the future isn't it interesting so we, 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 we should be careful not to to not you know go into that to the depth of the heart mind and the, uh, reminiscing an emotional connection and attachment that we, we carry it into our future the future right now doesn't exist because of the fact that we're creating our future in the now. Does it make sense to be clear in the now, to be in deep gratitude in the now, so that every moment you appreciate that you are in the space between heartbeats, whatever it may be you're doing moment to moment, that's what you're focused on. And for some people, it, it, it's a challenge because they're so used to wandering. And, you know, when you, you come to the understanding is that the now is all you really do have because you don't know and you don't really care about tomorrow. All you care about is the now. You experience every single thing. This is where you gain your deep understanding of gratitude. Now, I'm not saying that this is a very simple thing, that it's very easy. But as you progress, it will become with ease. So we relax the body, we're visualizing that with the hammock and we are in the now. And in every moment, we are creating our future. And then we want to breathe. We definitely want to breathe. The breath is our solitude, our breath is the now. It's always the now. It's never anything else. And the breath allows us to focus on the now. And what happens when we do that, these three steps, relaxing the body, moving into the now, and then breathing, breathing. We breath in through the nose, nice and easy, pull it in and breath out through the mouth. We still the ego mind. All that noise, all that chatter that we all get 24-7, it seems to never turn off, and it really never does. Some of us just go absolutely bonkers because say, geez, I wish I'd get this noise out of my head, these thoughts, these stupid thoughts, a lot of them, because they're not mine. And so by doing this, you still the mind. Now, as we breath in, we'd like to breath in at least six times while I'm talking. We don't take, we don't have to try to kill ourselves breathing in so heavily, but we nicely, easily breath in through the nose 
and then we breath out through the mouth. And then when we do this, we're pulling in massive amounts of energy. And we just think about it as breath, which is breathing, oxygen. It's much more than that. So as you visualize the breath, you visualize it at the root chakra. Bodhara in the root chakra is I am. So as we pull it through the root chakra, which is a, a, a ruby red, brilliant red color, and we pull the root through the root chakra, we then pull it up through the sacral chakra, the eye seal, and which is an orange. Then we pull it more through the solar plexus chakra, which is a yellow, which is I do, and then we pull it through the heart chakra, which is a beautiful green, which is I love, and then through the throat chakra, the Vishuddha, I talk, which is a beautiful blue, and then we, we move, continue to move it up to the third eye chakra, which is a uh, beautiful uh, indigo uh, violet, and is I see, and then finally, we bring that breath to the crown chakra, which is I understand, which is a beautiful purple. And as we do this, we pull that breath and we hold it just briefly, just briefly. I am light, I am love, I am. And in that brief moment, we condense it into pure liquid energy. And we release it over the pineal gland pull it right up in the back of the head and then, then con condense it, compress it in that, in that holding time and then we turn it into pure liquid energy and release it over the pineal gland. Now pineal gland, is, 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 you can look at it as a prune, a raisin, uh, it is, but it is, yeah, I look at it as a rosebud. You look at a rosebud, it's nothing, you know, it's just a little case, green, green ball, kind of. And but when you release this pure liquid energy onto it, it begins to bloom and it opens. Beautiful. Uh, and the petals don't die, by the way. They continue to be vibrant and eternal. I understand that the, that the pineal gland is our gateway to all the particles of existence and our pure consciousness and beyond. So it's quite, it's very important. So we do this about six times, you visualize it. Now obviously, we are challenged by the ego mind through this exercise, this process. And when the ego mind comes in, we know it comes in, we all do. And we basically just say lovingly, ego mind, you're not in charge, you're I am, so please take a seat. So you reinforce that with yourself and through the heart mind. And this is how you negate the ego mind, no matter how strong and powerful it is, because you're, you're not engaging it. You're not engaging it. You're just in wonderment. That's what you are. You're in wonderment. So remember that we are one that we're actually merged, but we're consciously aware that we're merged. The body, the heart, mind, and the God within. The pure consciousness becomes one. We describe it as heaven on earth, paradise, God planet. You're the paradise walking the surface of this planet. You're the God planet. So when you walk anywhere, you're creating that living experience, that existence in this physical world. Now we have others with us because we desire and we want to have as many as we possibly can throughout the universes. 
join us in this meditation and this now, forming the circle of light. So all of us are aware, we are consciously aware that we are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, deepest eternal gratitude. And we have the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes, all of them. And there are civilizations that vibrate at a different frequency than we do. That's why we don't see them like we see each other. But they're there. They're always there. Always. As many as 60,000 or more can surround any one of us at any one time, and that is true bliss. But they only take up a small amount of space because of their frequencies. They're always giving us suggestions, and they're always uh, looking to assist us as we would them, as we do them. We all learn from each other. And they're consciously aware that they're of the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, the deepest eternal gratitude. And we have the ascended pastors. Guan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Sinan de Jesus, El Moria, Abundantia, Pell, Thal, many, many, many more. And these are those who have ascended out of physical body into God form, pure consciousness. That's what we are. That's we're eternal and never ending. They have mastered much and continue to master. We are mastering and continue to master. And we move into physical form to experience physical. Touch, taste, feel. Now, they're consciously aware that they're of the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love and the highest, deepest, eternal gratitude. And they, too, assist us, and they learn from us, and we learn from them. It's always, it's always the one learning from all. We are constantly perfecting and learning, because we choose to. Now, we also have the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, of dark and beneath earth. And they are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love and the highest, deepest, eternal gratitude. If they aren't, they won't be in meditation with us. They cannot be in low frequency. Then, now we have the archangels, the, the uh, ascended masters, we have the inhabitants of these different civilizations. We're all together, and then we call upon all the light energy beings that are in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond them forever. They are consciously aware that they are the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, deepest eternal gratitude. And they come in the Google plexus. Now we have the archangels and the trillions, we have the civilizations uh, in the billions, uh, we have all these light energy beings in the googaplexes, and one googaplex fills this universe. So they come in the trillions of googaplexes from every direction, 360 degrees. To come in and, and, and be with us as we form this circle of light. They are consciously aware 
that they are the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest and deepest eternal gratitude. So our gathering is massive. But we also call on all the galactics, all the off worlders. Just in this sector of the galaxy, there's over a thousand species, civilizations, that come through this area. Now, we're only familiar with a smidgen of them. You have the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, you have the Zeta Reticuli, you have the Feline, you have the Golden Pyramids, you have the Avions, you have the Saturians, and it goes on and on and on. Now, all of them are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, of deepest eternal gratitude. And they're consciously aware that they are. Because any of those that aren't cannot be with us. Their frequencies are too low. If they did try to be with us without raising their frequencies, they would think of us. There's no way that any external civilization can influence us and lower dark matter frequencies or harbor harm against any one of us ever unless we allow it. So then we call upon to understand that the galactics, the off-worlders have been with us through our evolution through our enlightenment, our ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. Then we have all of our loved ones who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. And they are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, the deepest eternal gratitude. And they come in the billions. They want to be, all of us want to be together as we are all part of each other for this meditation. Now, we, we can also call upon all the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms on and above and below this planet of Earth, Gaia, in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light that we're beginning to form. Now, they are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, the deepest eternal gratitude. And just to name a fraction of them, the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trolls, the trees, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether. The mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, and the, men, and the, and the minotaur. Many, many, many more. And they're in the trillions. So now we're all together. We're all gathered. Visualize this in your heart mind. The expanse is endless. So arm in arm, hand in hand. Our gods with their gods, their gods with ours, as one, we form the circle of light. This covers trillions of universes. It converges on this planet Earth, in this now, in this meditation. The light is so brilliant and radiant that all of the suns that those before us created dim in comparison to our light. And we literally begin to levitate up above this planet Earth Gaia from the equator and we start to float up. Ascend, levitate, rise. And as we do this, we are immediately in a gossamer field. This field is everywhere. And it is filled with brilliant and vibrant trillions of different colored lights, frequencies, and the highest of highs. These high frequencies 
are beautiful colors, not none of which we've seen before. And we see this emerald green, flaming, sparkling light that Archangel Raphael carries. And it is a column to remind us that we are the power of healing. We see the violet, blue, purple, flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column that reminds us that we have the greatest power and strength and resolve that we are. We have the white fire. This column reminds us that we are literally imbued with this armor of brilliant white fire. It cannot be penetrated. It cannot be persuaded. Only if we choose to lower our white fire armor, our field, low enough to allow lower dark matter frequencies to seep in, or lower survival matter frequencies to seep in, and attach themselves. We're also reminded of the purple transmuting flame. This is the column that reminds us that if we do choose to do that, we immediately bring in the purple transmuting flame, we transmute all of these lower vibrational frequencies into neutralized substance, we send them back to pure consciousness where they are no more. We're also reminded of the violet ray. This is a column that reminds us that we can bring in the violet ray right after the purple transmuting flame, purify the area where once these low frequencies were, and harmonize and balance the field and to reinstate the balance of our white fire armor into the highest of highest highs and deep eternal love and gratitude. Now we begin to understand that this is all of the one, of all of us. And we have the golden white pink light, which is love, which we all are. It is the deepness, the understanding, it is the wonder that we are. It reminds us that we are deep eternal love and deep eternal gratitude. Now, we also, all of us, move into full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness bliss, joy, and peace, tranquility, and benevolence. And our God-like energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, and it continues to intensify, and it continues to expand. So we look up and we see this massive column that we've created. Now it's larger than the solar system. And this column is kind of opaque and it has trillions of brilliant reflecting rainbow prism lights, frequencies. And then at the top, we designed it so at 360 degrees complete circle. It cascades down the golden ocean. This golden ocean is of the highest of highest high frequencies of the deepest eternal love and the deepest of eternal gratitude and bliss and joy and wonder. And it saturates and floods everything. All of us, all of our brothers and sisters, all life, the highest value in the universes. And each of us are a drop of that golden ocean. And each of us carry the essence of that golden ocean. And then we move 
move further and we see our meditative sphere, it's that center circle. We created this sphere well over two years ago. And it houses all of our meditations in perpetual motion. Well over 800 meditations. And these are all of the highest of the deepest eternal love and the highest of the deepest eternal gratitude. And each day, it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. This is why it can be seen, heard, and felt and all that there is ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to affect existence. And it floods us all. Our physical bodies, our etheric bodies, our God, our pure consciousness, all of us bathes us, saturates us, floods us in the deepest of eternal joy, the deepest of eternal love, the deepest of eternal gratitude, the deepest of eternal bliss, the deepest of eternal gentleness, the deepest of eternal kindness, the deepest of eternal generosity, the deepest of eternal humbleness, the deepest of eternal tranquility, and the deepest of eternal benevolence flooding us constantly, non-stop, 24-7. All of our brothers and sisters on this planet Earth, Gaia, and this now, this meditation, this circle of light, beneath the planet, above it and below it, all things, all existence being flooded. All the Pleiadians, Syrians, Andromeda, Arcturians, Zeta Reticuli, the feline, the avions, the Golden Pyramid, all of these civilizations are being flooded as well. We are liberating this planet, our brothers and sisters, to awaken this so that they too can join in in their ascension into a higher existence, into a higher dimensional frequency, into the fifth, into the sixth, into the seventh, into the eighth, into the ninth, and onward. And we wonder, we wonder, and we continue to wonder. I'll join you in another place and I'll return to Corsa Fountain.